Welcome back. This is going to be my daily forecast for the commodities market and the cryptocurrency. Welcome back. Uh, this. Welcome back. We are here on Ether looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. And this is going to be my daily forecast for January 11th, 2021. If you like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner. Hit the like button, the bell button to see our newest videos. And you're welcome to join us over at uh, Patreon. The link is down below. You will get access to the full technical analysis of this video and our signal service and also our online trades. So you're very welcome. The link is down below. So we'll start by looking at the US dollar index. And as you can see, we have rallied up towards the 20 exponential moving average. And at this point, I think that we're just going to see more of the same. So the 20 has been the major resistance line for the US dollar index for quite some time now, all the way back to the beginning of November. So November 11th is where we basically pull back from the first time from the 20 exponential. Also here, we can say basically in the beginning. So rally pull back, rally, pull back, and, and so on and so on. And um, this is not a very encouraging sign. It's basically more of the same. It's basically a rally up towards the 20. We crossed it, but then we broke back down and trading underneath the 20 exponential. If we managed to break the 20 exponential and start trading above that, then we head towards the 50. That's at 91.37. Uh, otherwise, we turn around here and go even lower, which I think is more of the plausible outcome. Don't really see this uh, turning around anytime soon. There is going to be more stimulus, more uh, expansionary monetary policy and so on. That will just weigh in on uh, this um, currency and therefore it will go lower. But we got way overstretched. We were on the edge of being oversold and therefore we needed a pullback. But we're at 44 now. The technical indicators are still bullish. Uh, so we may see some choppiness here. We may go past. We could go similar to this and then go down. That is possible. But I don't think that we're going to have a trend reversal at this point. There's no indication of that. We have also had these run above and then go back down. The same goes for here. So it is plausible that we go, go higher. But uh, to see a complete change in trend and heading back towards the 100, that is not what we're looking at at this current stage. Let's look at uh, oil. So oil has hit uh, $52.62. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, that is just, to be fairly honest, purely nuts. There is no reason why oil should be trading at this, trading at this stage. Um, we should basically be down at $25. We should be down at $28. We are basically at the double that. Um, I've said it several times before, this entire move here was not based on demand. It was based on pure speculation. And it's still pure speculation. It's like uh, coronavirus vaccine, everything will turn back to normal. Demand will be the same as prior to the coronavirus. Um, people kind of get that before the coronavirus, we were still trending downwards. And the reason for that is because the world economy for the last probably two, three years had basically been slowing down very gradually. We were going uh, in basically into the normal recession. It usually happens every eight years. And we basically are now in year roughly 12 um, of this expansion. We had this major pullback. So, 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 so it is completely normal. We were expecting a major pullback anyway, even though the coronavirus didn't hit. This was just a perfect storm. So this was basically the oil war, basically the price war between Russia and Saudi Arabia. We had the coronavirus just slowing down on the economy. Demand just completely collapsed. And we had a massive oversupply of oil in the world. And that's why we had this massive fall where prices basically became negative 38. Uh, but this move here, even though we are increasing, uh, we have seen these kinds of move in the past. If you go back to uh, older data, for example, prior to the financial crisis, you also had pure speculation that ran up the price of a barrel of oil all the way up to $150 a share, that, a, a barrel. Um, and then it just collapsed all the way down to, I think it was 35 in only a matter of like three months. 
So speculation can drive a market significantly higher. We can go astronomically, astronomically high just um, due to speculation. And then we'll also fall due to speculation. At this point, we are getting very overstretched. Look at the Bollinger Band. We are way outside of the Bollinger Band. And that just doesn't make any sense. Complete doesn't make any sense. Uh, commodity that is in low demand should not be um, increasing way outside of the Bollinger Band. At least not the top of the Bollinger Band. If we were talking about the bottom of the Bollinger Band, yes, I would completely agree with that, but not the top of the Bollinger Band. So this would made sense, that made sense, this does not make sense. So at this point, a pullback towards at least a 50 or the middle of the Bollinger Band, it is very likely at this stage. Technical indicators are, uh, are very uh, bullish still, for example, the MACD, CC, Stochastic, and CCI, but the 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 RSI is significantly overbought. And yes, to, to say that a commodity that is basically the engine of the world economy, that uh, in the economy that is basically slowing down is overbought, uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me at least. So, but if you want to trade this, it is in an uptrend. 20 exponential is basically the bottom of this market for the time being. So pullback towards the 20 exponential is basically a major buying opportunity, even though it doesn't make any sense. So let's look at natural gas. There, sorry. So natural gas is just doing more of the same as I did expect. We have, have fallen from the high zero three point three all the way down here, rally up to the 20, broke down, rally to the 20, broke down, rally to the 20, broke down, then yet again, rally to the 20 and the 50. And then we are basically breaking down yet again. If you look at the technical indicators, they're all turning around. Uh, demand is not uh, uh, what was expected for January and probably also February, and therefore this market will go lower. If we break the 200 moving average, then we're going to down to two, and then we'll probably also go down to these very lows at 2 at 1.5. That is basically um, where this market most likely will go. But the 200 moving average is significant um, support at this current stage. The 20 exponential moving average is also holding. If we manage to break above the 50, then we're heading to 3 and probably a little bit higher than that. But um, at this current stage, I would consider buying it. I did buy it here. I'm going to consider buying it if we go back to the 200 and see a rally from there, then I could buy it. Otherwise, a break below the 200, and I'll basically be shorting this. So let's look at uh, copper. As you can see, we have been all over the place in copper. We went all to the top here of 3.729 and broke down to roughly 3.625. And then we rallied a little bit again and then under a little bit lower. So what I think is going to happen here is that we're going to see a pullback towards the 200 moving, the 20 exponential moving average of roughly 3.56 and then continue rallying. Uh, we can see that we're on the edge of being overbought. The, uh, the technical indicators are turning around and the 20 exponential moving average has been the bottom of this market for a very long time. So expect just more of the same pullbacks towards the 20, basically a buy-in and the target is 3.729. So let's look at gold. So gold broke the hearts of most people on, on Friday. We had a fall of roughly uh, 3%, and uh, we had a fall of more than uh, roughly 5% from these highs to these lows. So my prior analysis to this, I changed my analysis. I should probably shouldn't have changed my analysis. So my prior analysis was that we had a significant resistance line here, which we technically broke. And therefore, I expected, okay, we did break this uh, resistance line and then we could see a change here. But above this area, we ran into the same problem as before. So this area here, which is roughly 1960 to roughly 2000, 
was enormous uh, resistant in the past. And it is yet again enormous resistant. Every time we get to that area, we break down. We can see it all the way here. This was basically back in July, August, September. We did not manage and then we started breaking down. We tried to rally back to this level here in the beginning of November, broke down all the way to the 200 moving average, started uh, rallying yet again, and we broke down significantly on Friday. Therefore, that level is the big problem of, in this market. Furthermore, I should have stayed with this analysis that we have the bottom of the market roughly here. So we have the very lows here, lows here, and now we tested those lows yet again on Friday. And as long as this holds, then this should be okay. However, if we break this resistance and this support line, then we can just see this market absolutely collapse. And I mean absolutely collapse. We could go all the way down to these very lows here. That's uh, that's $1,500 level. Uh, but at this point, we are, it is holding. So it is still holding. And uh, and uh, my prior analysis, I'll probably stick to it a little bit because it was based on that we had this resistant line here and the support line here, and that we're going to travel into this corner and then we rally to the upside. I am still bullish in the long, term, uh, long run for gold. I think there's more arguments that we are going higher in gold than we are going lower. Reason for that is because we are going to see a lot of um, additional stimulus in the next coming months and years. And we're also going to see expansionary monetary policy from the Fed in order to keep the market up and it basically get the market growing and so on. So, so that will all weigh in on the dollar. It will basically decline then in the next few months or years. And that should be bullish for gold and other commodities. So I do not favor a complete collapse in gold. I would, I would say that would not make a lot of sense um, technically. Um, I do favor the upside still, but this was a break of these previous highs. We could actually change this um, line here. Instead of having that, we could have basically have this. So this is no longer the, basically the, the trend line has basically changed. The resistance line has basically changed. And this gives more room to travel in between this area of 1830 to 1950. Three. So we could be traveling up, up and down in this area here until we get to the corner and then break to the outside, probably. So if we have a turnaround here, I'll definitely be uh, probably be buying more into this. Otherwise, this was a horrible three days for, for gold. So silver. Same goes for silver. Uh, we found support here at the 200 moving average. But we could make a line that goes something similar to this, which is uh, most likely our support line, um, which is technically holding at this point. We broke a bit below down here at the moment, uh, back in um, the end of November, and then rallied. Um, and we could say that we have a resistant line here. So It'll most likely be similar to gold that we are going to see the bottom here. This is going to be high and then we're going to go back and forwards and so on. If this basically breaks, then it will go to these lows and that low is just above the 200 moving average. And I think that a lot of buyers will go back in and buy this at the, around the 200 moving average. A break below the 200 moving average opens the door to these very lows of $19, 17 dollars. Uh, for 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 silver. Uh, otherwise, I think that this is what we're going to see. Pull max from here up towards this line, back down, and then go higher. So let's look at platinum. Sorry. There. So platinum had a horrible day yesterday, and that was completely expected. Uh, if you look at the uh, uh, Bollinger Bands, you can see that we were way outside of the Bollinger Band for several days 
and then we collapsed. So this is probably due to the US dollar uh, appreciating and that will basically weigh in heavily on this cur on this um, on this uh, precious metal. So we reached the middle of the Bollinger Band. Uh, technical indicators are still very negative and uh, we could go lower. So if we break this level here, we'll go all the way down to the bottom of the Bollinger Band that is 979. But I think that 1000 is going to be quite significant. So basically just uh, psychologically, people will start buying it in this area here. Otherwise, uh, you just have to pay attention to when it turns around. You'll see that in the four and, and one hour chart. So let's look at Pallium. So same goes for Pallium. We were way outside and uh, we're just seeing more of the same. We have the top here, we have the bottom here, and we tested the middle and then pulled back above the 20 moving average and the 50 moving average. But I think that we are going to go much lower. I've at least the bottom of the bullish band where we're going. Technical indicators are all turning around. There's a lot of room to the downside. And yes, uh, when we get to down to these areas here, it is possible to buy into this again. So let's look at aluminium. So most of these uh, precious metals and commodities had a really bad time on Friday. The same goes for aluminium, not, uh, not as bad as the uh, for, uh, for pallium and platinum, but we did fall and we we're trading just above the 20 exponential moving average. Technical indicators for, for aluminium are still very bearish at this point. Uh, I would like to see this go to the bottom of the Bollinger Band that is right above the 50 moving average and that's where I will enter a buy with a stop loss right underneath and a target off the top of the Bollinger Band. So that is going to be my trade for aluminium when we get there. So nickel, it was wrong, sorry. So nickel had a really bad day, which also was expected. We were outside of the Bollinger Band here. Technical indicators were, were are turning around. We are going to test the middle of the Bollinger Band and probably even lower towards 16.547. If we get all the way down to the bottom, that will basically be the best that could basically happen in this market. I will be all over this when we get to this area because I think we will turn around here and head back to these very highs. So that is going to be my trade, but otherwise I will take a look at whether or not we're going to run uh, turn around in this area. So we were overstretched. It needs to pull back. If we manage to break the 20 exponential average here, we'll go lower and that's your major buying opportunity. So let's look at the uh, sugar. So sugar has continued its uh, downfall. It is uh, now trading at 0 0.1551. Uh, we are going to test the 50 moving average, the, no, the 20 exponential, the 20 moving average, and the 50. And hopefully, we'll probably go even lower than that. We'll go to these very lows, which is at 0 0.1407, where we'll also see the bullish bound go this way, move that. Technical indicators are turning really, really negative. It's only the MACD is still above the signal line. Otherwise, everybody else is turning around. But we need to fall, make this fall even further. Uh, this move was fairly expected. I was considering basically shorting this at this point, but i rather wait until it pulls back and then buy it because we are in uptrend and I like to buy basically things that uh, have value when they are getting low in, in price with an uptrend. So let's look at cotton. So we can see that we are starting to pull back. We are, it is highly anticipated that we'll pull back towards the 20 uh, exponential moving average at 0 0.76. Um, and uh, the reason why I say that is because we're still overbought. We're on the edge of the Bollinger Band and these technical indicators are turning around. So, the past has shown in, as, us that we are pulling back towards the 50, the 20, 20, and probably the 20 again here. If the 20 breaks, then we're heading to the 50, and that is even a better buying opportunity. So let's look at uh, Cocoa. So nothing really happened here. Um, we're still in the middle of nowhere. We have the highs here, we have the lows down here, and this is basically in the middle of a big mush. So before we break before, if you want to buy this, we need to break well above the 20 exponential. 
uh, if we want to sell this, it has to break the 200 moving average. So I would just tell everybody, just stay far, far, far away from this. It is very likely that we're going to see this market go higher, but at this point, it is uh, not tradable in my view. So let's look at the weed as the last commodity. Uh, so uh, we started our downfall and this was also anticipated because we are way outside of the Bollinger Band and we are way over, over on the edge of being overbought. Technical indicators are turning around, so we may see this market fall towards the 20 exponential moving average or the, the middle here is the 20 moving average, the simple. Uh, even better would be the 50 uh, moving average. But we'll see how far this will go. It will start to level off and then go back up. Because we are in uptrend and this will most likely just continue going higher. So if you have any questions, just write to me on Patreon. Otherwise, good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.